Sheesh! Look at that. Holy monster. This thing looks like a weapon. What's up creators, it's your boy, Mad Mike. Today's vlog is just gonna be a little bit of a walk around, a little bit of update on the 1970 Plymouth Duster Drag Car Pro Street, Street Freak, Street Machine, Rebuild, Barn Find, that we are building on Mad Creative. Behind me here is a 440 big block that we yanked out of a 1978 Dodge Sportsman Motorhome slash RV. It's a real 440 big block. We've been uh, getting it running on our engine run stand. Today, I'm gonna just do a quick walk around and show you a couple things, fire up the motor for you because we got some crazy long tube headers or not long, whatever you wanna call them, uh, fender well headers that are gonna go onto the block. Um, so let's just get into it and I'll do a little walk around and show you where I'm at. Like I was saying, this is my 1970 Plymouth Duster drag car, um, X drag car that we are basically converting potentially into a street legal car. I gotta find glass. Other than glass, that's kind of our big concern. I do have some massive weld wheels with some 33, 18, 15 inch tires. But if you look down there, there is some lines for tread and they are dot rated. Inside, it's fully caged. And uh, I just got my passenger seat mocked up in here, the Kirky seat. Gotta make some rails for that, some sliders. And it's a full cage. It's got a TCI shifter down there. And yeah, pretty bare bones, fully tubbed in the back there. Pretty badass, got a little tiny fuel cell on the rear. It's a well built car. This was running 975, it's the lowest I saw it run out in Quebec when uh, they had like their big 500 cubic inch motor installed in it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get building on this. But we're getting ready to throw this 440 big block that we pulled out of a motorhome RV power. Flick, flick, feels so cool. You guys ready? Three, two, one, fire in the hole. Yeah, buddy. That's not even like quarter throttle. <laughs> All right, let's shut her down. Into here, which is an A body. We're getting rid of these engine plates, making our custom engine mounts, which if I show you over here, just came in. So we got some new engine mounts. These are off of a 74 Dodge Charger. I like this style better than what the motorhomes came with because they're just kind of a crappy ass bushing with a through bolt, I don't know, focus, focus eh? come on. There we go. So I don't really like that style. There's not a lot of surface area down here for the motor to rest on. So we got these, which will go in here like that and just have a lot more surface area and be easier for us to put a through bolt through there and make our custom mounts on our K-frame. So we got those as well as got this new training mount because I don't have a uh, training mount bracket on the center of our uh, duster. So I'm gonna have to fab up my own training mount. So I'm not sure what style training mount the dusters came with, but we are gonna be installing this onto the back of our tail shaft right there. Shlook. And we got new bushings and oh, what do you know? Look at this. Totally forgot to update you guys on this as well. So the Motorhome 440 comes out of a truck with a short tail stock. This is the old transmission. As you can see here, this is the short tail stock with the weird like bolt up yoke or whatever you wanna call it there. So I went out and I bought a new 727 transmission um, for a big block and got it all bolted up this week. Took me a little bit of time. This was my first transmission that I've ever installed onto a big block. So I just wanna make sure I was doing everything right. Needless to say, transmission is hooked up. We now have our longer tail stock, which is for cars. So that is a job well done. It shifts through all our gears. I didn't have reverse the other day, so I was a little bit worried, but what I did was I warmed up the motor today, checked my fluid, kept adding some uh, transmission fluid. I got the ATF4. It says to use a Dextron or whatever. I'm hoping that that's the correct stuff. I read a bunch of forums. 
After topping up our fluid, firing up the motor, we got reverse and all of our other gears. So this is a good transmission, which I told was good and I confirmed by running it through all the gears and I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, all of our shift linkage, our cooler lines are hooked up. I just have them looped around right now so I don't spit fluid everywhere. I'll have to get a longer speedo cable because this is for the, the van, so that's not gonna reach our gauge cluster. And yeah, transmission is on the 440 big block. So that was a big job that I didn't film, but there was a lot of people that helped me out by watching their videos. AKA special thanks to Johnny Mopar. Johnny, thanks for your videos, dude. They're really helpful, they're really insightful, especially when it came to doing my torque converter, bolting everything up there, uh, marking with some spray paint, the bolt orientation and whatnot. That was super helpful. So let's get into what I'm really excited about today, which is the headers that I just unbolted. I just took off the stock manifolds that were on this 440, which are super heavy, by the way, and uh, very restrictive, so I don't know if you can see that there. These are the stock manifolds there. Come down, just shot out down there, but they're so heavy. And we got our new Fenderwell headers right here. And we are gonna install those and just fire up the motor just to see what it sounds like. I wanna see the sound difference between the stock and the Fenderwell headers. Um, our gaskets behind here are a little bit cracked, obviously, so we're gonna have an exhaust leak from there, but I don't care. We'll order some new gaskets. But for today, I just want to bolt on the headers real quick, fire it up, and see what these things sound like. And another thing, on the back side of these, maybe you guys can help me out. Around here, what kind of gasket should I order or get for these headers? Um, should I get a stock gasket? Will that work? The, that comes on the big block if I just order that up or do I need a special type of gasket for these headers? Leave a comment below, let me know if you guys know if there's a specific type of gasket that I should get. So we got the driver side, I was gonna say passenger, driver side headers off right now. We'll go over to the passenger side, get the passenger side headers off or manifold off and then we will bolt up the fender well headers open up the garage door, fire it up, and see what these, uh, these things sound like, man. I'm excited. All right, let's get into it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, there's some cooling jackets inside of that header. I just found out. Glad I caught that on camera. So I was just about to unbolt the passenger side and that rear bolt right there just started puking coolant. Huh, there must be some water jackets or like veins inside the block there for cooling. So I don't know what I have to do there. I might have to drain the fluid, which sucks. Damn it. Because if I have to drain the fluid, I want to fire this motor up and then I got to top it up with fluid again. What do I do? What do I do? All right, I got to do some thinking here and figure out why it's puking coolant out of my headers. Wow, that sucks. Let's try this again. I got all the coolant drained out of the block. So we're gonna yank off this passenger side manifold and hopefully there's no coolant that's gonna come blasting out my face this time. All right, learn something new every day. Let's get after it. Camera on. There we go. Passenger side manifold is finally off. Wow, those are heavy. There we go. All right, lesson learned. There's coolant behind these bolts. So when I cracked these uh, manifold studs loose and pulled out that bolt, it actually pulled out the threads from the block side. So if that stayed in, I wouldn't have had to drain the coolant and I wouldn't have had a coolant leak. But because it's corroded and there's a lot of corrosion on it, it ended up pulling out, as you can see there, if it focuses. There we go. So it pulled the uh, threads out of the 
block side, which would have been sealing in that coolant. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of uh, some type of Loctite there. So when I bolt up my headers, it won't rip these studs out of the block and I can keep the coolant in because I was kind of curious about that. I'm like, how do I put the headers on if I wanna change them out? Do I have to drain the coolant every time? But if you look here, this is the first bolt that I started with. So if you look here at this stud here, it's just threading right out of the block and that's where all the coolant came out of. So if I'm able to keep these studs in nice and tight, I shouldn't have any coolant leaks from there. Look at that. Holy monster. This thing looks like a weapon. Wow. That is pretty cool. So I wonder why the drive, oh probably for the steering uh, rack or the steering column to go through there. That's probably why that's wider like that. That's my guess. That looks insane. Like spaghetti. I know I'm Italian, but mamma mia, would you just look at that. Brap, brap, brap. So rad. They're just hanging on here loose on the studs right now. I don't have them bolted up. So I think what I'm gonna do next, go pick up some more coolant, go grab some oil, drain the oil and the filter because I wanna put on this A-body or car style mid sump oil pan and pickup. Right now I have the truck uh, with the rear mount. I believe it's a rear mount sump. So it's gonna hit the K member. So I'll pick up some oil and stuff for that, some coolant. And then uh, we might be able to fire this thing up and see what it sounds like with these long tube headers or fender well headers, whatever the heck you want to call them. <laughs> 